So this is gonna be a quick update to the previous lesson where we're gonna be looking at the event object. So looking at the different information that's contained within the event object, such as the type and the target element that initiated the event. So this is a simpler way to write the code, selecting the event or object information instead of having to write it out as a string value. Previous lesson, we saw how we can add events to page elements. We can also track its event object whenever that event occurs. So we can track that within the E parameters and we're gonna be updating the values in order to display the event parameters. So updating the E click and let's set this value within the element. Actually, we'll create a second element on the page. So instead of the H1, We'll create a second one and that would just be h2 and i'll write within here that this is uh, click me select that element and then we'll add in the event listeners for their tracking in the event parameters so whenever the element three gets clicked using the function keyword get the e object value and this is going to be the event information that's going to occur whenever this event is triggered. And there's a whole bunch of information contained within this event object. And as you can see, within the E parameters, there's all of this information. So this includes the XY position of the mouse. There's also the layers, the movement, and there's also the pointer type. So it's a mouse, the path to the element that triggered the event. And there's also at the end here, there's type. So it's tracking the event type. So this is another object that you can get a property value from it. So let's specify the type here. And whenever we click it, we get the click type. So we can add in this click type by passing over this information into a new function. And similar to what we were doing where we're outputting within adder, but we're gonna simplify the code here. So selecting the adder, we're also going to increment the value of counter. We don't have to log it out. We can track that information into the text content here. And instead of passing in the value, we're going to get the E object, the event object passed in. And here we can select the event type to log that out into the console. So this will track the event. We can get the event target in, in addition to that. So updating it, instead of having the function as adder, we're gonna write that as adder one, and this set the function adder one. So by default, the event parameter will be passed in to the function, and this way we can pick it up within the click event here. So we've got the click event here, and update the event type that triggered it. In addition to the type, we can also get the element that triggered so there's a target value. So if you do need to get the element that made the update, you can use the event target. And you can also set the content of the event target. So now when I click it, it's going to update this event target using the event parameters. So this is a way that you can simplify some of the code that we did earlier, where instead of having all of these different element event objects, we can add in the event object and automatically pick it up within the one function of adder. So we've got the mouse up, mouse down, and all going over to the same function, and that's tracking in those event types. We're tracking the event target. So let's update this back to event type. And when we click it, we see that we get, first we get the mouse down, mouse up, and click. That's all being output to the event object that triggered the event in a more simpler format than having to specify that within the string values. You can also add in the other mouse events this way.